Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Yet another entry with regards to this popular channel. And this time, I was quite surprised after reading about this particular cryptid, how uplifting and positive this particular cryptid is. It really, really wants me to wish, you know, hey, that I could run into this cryptid out there. Just the thought of something like this truly is out there so it makes me wish golly you know the chances of running into this I really hope are high and after reading about this cryptid you'll be surprised as I am that hey the, uh, these things we've actually seen before not in real life in most cases of course but with regards to in movies and in video games it's a cryptid that apparently has a huge cultural impact and it's far enough to reach many of the mediums that you and I have seen already, both in our childhood and, of course, coming on uh, to you know this day and age. Now, this cryptid that I'm talking about, it's one that's called the oracular tree. I know if 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 you would have heard that just like I did, I would have thought, huh? You know, what is this? What is an oracular tree? But when I talk about it, you'll realize all of a sudden, hey, this is something that I've heard about. An oracular tree is basically a tree that can speak to people. And whether they speak to people uh, actually face to face, or whether they speak to people on a telepathic level, it all depends on the tree itself. And with these trees, the reason I mentioned that there's, they have such a positive and uplifting notion to them is because they speak to people and essentially they provide guidance, they provide wisdom, they sometimes prophesize the future for the person. They have that uh, positive aspect to them that there's nothing sinister, nothing malicious with these trees. All they're there for is to help you out. And people can apparently go up to these trees, talk to them, find something about themselves that they didn't know, maybe even find something in terms of a new... Uh, a new decision in their life, just something like that, all with the guidance of these trees. And these trees are apparently found in many parts of the world. They're located in Asia, they're located in India, they're located in the Arctic, they're located in South America. Again, whether or not these trees are still existing today is up for debate. Whether they've existed even in the past, I don't know, but considering who the people that I'm about to mention that I apparently have met these trees, one can see again how huge of an impact these trees have. And I'll highlight some examples of some of these trees for you here, uh, so that way you'll get an idea essentially of what makes up an oracular tree. One of the most famous oracular trees has to do with a tree that's called the Indian Tree of the Sun and the Moon. I know it's a kind of a long title, but yeah, that's the title itself. Again, it's called the Indian Tree of the Sun and the moon and the reason for this is because it's actually a pair of trees that are intertwined together apparently the way this legend goes is that this tree had two personalities both male and female and it all depended on the time of the day as to whether you would get the male or the female if you went during the daytime and you spoke to the tree it talked back to you but it would be in as a male but if you went at night it talked back to you as a female and again how curious is that how how strangely and particularly interesting is that to have a tree with multiple personalities all depending again on the time of the day that you go to the tree and to show you what kind of impact this tree apparently had none other than the legends Alexander the Great and Marco Polo are said to have visited this particular tree Again, um, when you think about that, especially with Alexander the Great, who is considered, of course, one of the most historic figures that the surface ever had and apparently visited this tree, it's something that is truly, truly uh, understandable to know, you know, what kind of impact this tree has. Another tree that's apparently very famous is called the Weeping Date Palm Tree. Again, it's called the Weeping Date Palm Tree. And the reason why it's so famous is because the Prophet Muhammad is said to have visited this tree. And it was, seemed like it was actually by uh, mistake or by accident. Muhammad is, of course, one of the most 
uh, famous historic figures, uh, religious figures, um, who is still associated with many religions out there. And the way the story goes is that Muhammad was delivering one of his sermons. And when he was delivering on it, I don't know if he was practicing the sermon or he actually had a group of people in front of him. But when he was actually doing the sermon itself, he was leaning against this tree. And as he was doing the sermon, the tree apparently began to cry like a child. Um, like it was weeping in a child's voice. And so uh, Muhammad came down uh, from, I guess, the area he was at. He you know, consoled the tree, started embracing it, and, you know, making sure that if it was crying to find out why. And the reason, apparently, that the tree was crying was that it missed hearing these kind of religious sermons that apparently was being done in the past, but not at that present time. So, again, it goes to show another set of personality, in this case for the tree, to have that kind of empathy, to have that kind of emotion, where it missed having something and then now that it was near whatever the, this thing that it missed now that it was near to it it was able to essentially uh, cry on, on the spot on there and again those are the two examples that are the most famous on there now to talk about again how you and I have probably actually already seen an oracular tree at least when it comes to certain medias uh, think again of if it if, as if if you and I are like regular uh, child or children's back then and we played the Zelda games how many of the characters involved talking trees including the uh, one within the Legend of Zelda the Ocarina of Time one of the most famous examples there here was a tree that Link uh, s sort of saw as a senior father figure of some sort and the, the tree of course ensured that Link was not harmed and looked over Link, I guess, as he grew up. And with that, um, especially when the tree, even to its dying breath, imposed, you know, the importance of Link and the impact that Link would have and gave it all his wisdom that it could, it, it you know, made you realize that, hey, this is something that I've already seen. An even better example is, of course, those of us that have seen the Lord of the Rings films who can't forget the legend of the Ents, those those giant trees that, uh, with the help of the hobbits, went after, was it Saruman, if that's correct, um, after Saruman had destroyed so many of them. And again, and seeing the game, and then seeing the movies with these talking trees, and then using the, uh, the oracular trees that I just described here, doesn't it make one wish that these things were still alive that were out there that you could visit such a tree and know that you know this this tree is would be kind and generous it would just be interested in talking with you and hearing what you have to say and at the same time um, you talking with it and making sure that it imparted um, everything that it knew on there it just it just seems so positive and this is something that um, I was quite surprised when I was doing research on this and um, hopefully after hearing all of this I hope that you as well feel what I feel when it comes to these trees so what do you think oracular trees um, has anyone heard of them does anyone know any further stories related to these particular cryptids please you know share them below post your comments uh, share them with others and as always any other fascinating cryptid that I come across I'll share it with everyone else thanks again everybody take care